Hey, you guys, Desmond here. And Lucretia. And welcome back to the channel. Woo! Honey, we are here back again during this amazing holiday season. Um, and we're here to talk about Dracula. Dracula Titans, to be exact. Yeah. But before we get into it, as always, I got to remind y'all to like, comment, and subscribe. The amount of growth that we've got in this channel during our first year has been amazing. Yes. Thank y'all. And I hope y'all are ready for the videos we got coming for the one week we don't have Drag Race. Just like last <laughs> year, it was one week where we didn't have any Drag Race. We get that one week again. But we have some really fun videos. Um, if you followed us for a while, where our ranking videos are coming back. Um, and then also we're going to be giving our wish list for the global all stars. It originally was US versus the world, but now we found out about global all stars. I'm excited. Rest in peace versus the world. You had a short but a fun run, okay? <clears throat> A messy run, though. A messy run, especially the, especially at the beginning of the year. <laughs> messy. But anyway, mm. so stay tuned for that. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of that. So, Miss Christian May, <laughs> what did we think of this episode of the Boulay Brothers Dragula Titans? Um, it was a, a lot of what was said in the very beginning of the episode was much needed. Um, Coco Cane is a real one. Just crown Coco, please. Just, just give her, give it to her, give it to her. She has been like the realest <laughs> this whole season. She has, I, I, I love the way her drag has evolved. Even the quote unquote last minute drag that she has Ooh, that pisses me off every time. I'm glad she addressed that as well. We're gonna talk about it though. <laughs> that she had like the from from season four to now has has just like elevated so much so Honestly, coco's the only reason i'm still watching like if it wasn't for this channel and it mm -hmm. the show i would have stopped watching titans a long time ago was, oh yeah if coco wasn't on there yeah i would have stopped coco melissa and even kendra was making this watchable for me Mm -hmm. and it's just honestly mm -hmm. it just it, it it amazes me because Dragula season 4 was such an amazing season it really was and you would think coming off the hype of that we would have another great season but I guess they misunderstood what their audience wanted wanted because there can't be no I I, I it, I can't imagine anybody wanting all the drama we got this season. The whole throuple thing, like if that wasn't there, I think it would have been a great season. A lot better, and I'm just like, I bet they could edit around that, you know, include it, but not throw it down our throats for eight episodes. Mm -hmm. it's like this can't be the same people who gave us Dracula season four, mm -mm. and it makes me worried about season five because you know they're casting right now. For all your ghouls and monsters out there, the casting is still open. So go on, put your video in, honey. Hey, we'll love to see you next year. Mm -hmm. Love to see, you. especially uh, if you're a POC, we need more POC, more of those um representation. So go on, get up in there. Go on, and if you're from Texas, that's even better. <laughs> if you're from Texas, that's even better, honey. But yeah, so. I'm just I'm I'm glad next week's the last week. I'm so over this show. Like I know we're gonna rank all of our favorite. I mean, we're gonna rank all the seasons from this year. This one's gonna be pretty low. Mm. Honestly. Mm. I, I might have enjoyed Italy just a hair more. I know. <laughs> oh, I know. Boo. -wee. Well, we'll see. We'll see. It really just depends on how this ends next week. Because, you know, mm -hmm. it's all about how it ends. If it ends great, I might be willing to bump it up a little bit high. And then, <laughs> then what? It should... As long as they don't play in my good sister's face. Yeah. 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 I I honestly feel like the crown should go to the person who needs the crown. I've always felt that way. Mm-hmm. 
Like, I just, that's just me. Like, I, I used to be a real stickler about track records. But like, mm-hmm. no, the one with the best track record should win. No, I need somebody with the best story to win. And granted, I know the story is being told by the producers. Mm-hmm. But there's been a few stories that we've gotten, especially last year, that just didn't make sense with who won. Right. And I'm not here to drag any of those winners. So we're not going to. And even this year, we've gotten a few where the story just didn't add up. And I'm like, N- nothing makes sense. How did we get here? But yeah, let's go ahead and get into this. We don't have much to discuss this week when it comes to the episode. It was pretty cut and dry, but we're going to get into it anyway. So we entered the boudoir and um, they were, you know, they were fine at first. Mm -hmm. But Astrid Mm. really made the... um, You can't read the room. She really can't. Poor baby. And I just, I don't... That is the most me, 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 I, I, I person. And it's just... The fact that they all, once she started up, they were all like, well, yeah, if Melissa had a problem, Melissa should have said something. Blah, 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 da, 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 da. I asked them, did this in the third. Honey, if somebody's going through something... And if I'm they, not going to sit here and tell you that I got a problem. Yeah. That's none of your business. I found out about Melissa's issues watching this show back. I, I I promise you a good chunk of them found out about the issues Melissa had before coming to the show while watching this show. Mm-hmm. And it's just, yeah, I just, I this whole scene right here just didn't sit right in my spirit. And it was all, although. It's like for the ones who didn't know what was going on, it was really cringy. Yeah, and even though Melissa's not in the room, they're trying to gaslight the situation. Right. Well, I didn't know anything was wrong with you. You should have told me something was wrong with you. How I can't trust you. To, as far as I can throw you, I'm not telling you nothing. Now, I have to give Hosos her props here. She was the only one that was just kind of like, hey, you know, we didn't know what she was going through, blah, blah, blah. But Victoria and Astrid, honey, they were ready to go in. Mm-hmm. And I love, I, I just find it funny that Miss Victoria been quiet for 12 episodes, but now all of a sudden she want to bark, bark. And talk. And you know, I love me some Victoria. I do. I do. And I'm so happy she made it to the end. But these past two episodes of the Bad Taste. I love me some Harpo. I do. But I'll kill him dead. Really left the bad taste in my mouth these last two episodes. Really did. Really did. But yes, uh, Coco comes in and read them their rights. Yeah. All of their rights, their Miranda rights. <laughs> you know, rights from head to toe. Just read to toe. Was like, excuse you. But no. And um, it, it was much needed. And I'm glad towards the end, she was like, I hate that I had to talk to y'all like this for y'all to hear me. Mm-hmm. If I would have came in common collective, y'all wouldn't have heard what I had said. And I yes. agree, it was fucked up that only Coco went to go check on their sister. They've heard yes. multiple times this is a sisterhood. And yet, nobody got up. Oh, I'm so glad we're all friends and we're gonna be the best of friends after this whole thing is over we're gonna go on tour together we're gonna do this we're gonna do that. no 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 i'm not nope. going on. they just announced the tour dates i need to see if they're, they're coming to texas because I, I will go they're going to dallas they are they're coming to dallas i might, I might have to look into that because and- uh i follow coco kane on instagram and i yeah, see that's who i saw who posted it and i'm like oh mm-hmm. Oh, we, I might need. I might need Dallas in together. April. Might need to get some coins together and go on down and see Coco. Yes. And hear me, Coco and Neil. Coco and Neil. <laughs> mm-hmm. mm-hmm. And this will be my first like Dragula event. You know, I've been to a few, uh, not a few, but I've been to drag events. But it's very pageant, you know, dancey. You know, I've never mm-hmm. been to like a Dragula event. So like, I would love to go one, go to one. Damn no. Huh? I haven't been to any of them as many times as the people around me go 
I would love to go to a drag show. Honey, I know, baby, you was in Austin. There's brunches every day. I know. Oh, you don't want to go? I don't want to go by myself. See, that's where we differ, honey. I love going places by myself. If I had a car, mm -hmm. they call me. Where you Oh, I'm at such and such. By yourself. Mm hmm. Having a great time. Mm hmm. A great time. Always at a movie theater. But anyway, yeah. Back to this situation here. Uh, yes, Miss Coco, this was well needed. And I, I love how she addressed, uh, <laughs> referred to my drag to last minute once again. And mm -hmm. I'm sitting there and I'm like, honey, that's the whole reason they give you that day before the floor show to work on your garment. Mm -hmm. Regardless how much you have done already or not. And like every episode, we see something from Victoria that she's working on. So I'm very confused on why she's the one who tried to call out folks for their drag being done last minute. Mm -mm. But yeah, if this, and one thing I got to give the production their props, I think they knew our, what our response was going to be to this. Mm -hmm. I love how every time there's a lie, baby, a flashback is shown. Yes. Be like, oh, I never said that. Cute to see. Because you said. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Like, especially during Melissa's, uh, uh, her speech in the last episode. Mm -hmm. I, I, there was facts backing everything up she was saying. I'm like, yes, yes. Mm. So that that's that's been a silver lining for this show as well. I think they realize what they did and they're trying to fix it with the production. They're like, well, hell, they're gonna be mad, but let, let's show that we 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 know we're here. We understand. Mm -hmm. We understand. But yeah, Coco, thank you for coming in. And this is what she was talking about her drag. Refer to my drag as last minute one more time, please. Right. Please. Mm. And honestly, I truly feel like the bulk of this conversation was towards these two. Mm-hmm. Like, don't get me wrong, Hoso and Eva isn't off the hook. No. You know, they, not in any way, shape, or form. They've done their share as well. But it's been mostly these two. Yes. And look at them. Looking all sad. Well, this one's looking sad. Astra looks confused. Um, but yeah, like me? Are you talking about me? Am I the problem? Yes, yes, you are. Well, we get to the floor show stage, the main stage, and um, we find out that tonight we're you know all season we've been going over different challenges from the previous seasons, which mm -hmm. I really like that idea. Mm -hmm. So, I just wish the season was better, but this. Uh -huh. week, we're going to be going back to season four and we're going to be mm -hmm. doing the horror icons. And if you remember, that was the very first episode of season four. Yes. That was also the challenge that Astrid won. And I find it funny, spoiler alert, clearly you've seen the episode before watching this. I find it funny that Astrid is one of the ones that go home on the challenge she previously won in her last season. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, we find out that it's the horror um, icons, and plus they have to reenact a famous scene that includes mm. their horror icon. Whichever scene they felt like was the most important to recreate, that's what they did. Mm -hmm. We also find out that they're having a fright feat, which is a lie detector test. But if you tell a lie, you get shocked with electricity. Hey. And uh, the questions were formed by the queens. So yes. They got all the questions together and they gave it to, I believe his name was John. You um, know who that's from. Is he the same one the Try Guys used? Yes. Okay, I, I thought that was him. <laughs> I, I, I thought that was, I thought so. Um, but the Boulets also announced we're not doing a top four this season. Ooh. So one or more, you know, they kind of hinted at it here. They find that you find out later for sure. One or more of you may go home. And I'm like, okay, well then that means somebody's going to go home during the fright feet. And since Melissa quit, nobody's going to come back. Mm -hmm. And then one will go home after the main stage on the floor show. That was incorrect. That was, but that was my assumption. And let's just talk about it real quick. Why put that rule into play about the fright feet and not use it? Well, I think it was at the beginning because they thought somebody was going to quit, but nobody's quit during the fright feet. 
But also, if you listen to what they said, they also said if they feel like you didn't do well enough, that you can get sent home. Well, they always throw that line in there. If we feel like you didn't execute it well enough, we can send you home. Why put that clause in the game if you're not going to use it? I've been waiting all season for it. Well, I mean, it's almost like the chocolate. Didn't use it till the last episode. (laughs) At least they used it. Hell. (laughs) Facts. My goodness gracious. But yeah. um, Yeah, that's everything. That's everything. So here we are with the lie detector, our two guys, Kyle yes. and, I, and I knew their name. I knew his name, but I forgot it. Yeah, mm. it's John. Yes, so John. All- I love his just stoic expression. Yes, yes. His his just monotonous voice. Just so no. we yes. find out during the um, fright feet. That nobody has been messing with Coco's drag. Which goes back to my theory that I had a few weeks ago that it was production fucking with her. Hmm. Because she even said, okay, maybe I'm not being sabotaged, but somebody's doing something. Hmm. She even answered, uh, do you think somebody's messing with your stuff or something on that line? She said yes, and it was true. So I feel like production was the one messing with her. I just want to talk to Boulez. I just want to talk. <laughs> but why, why Coco? You couldn't fuck with Victoria, the clear person who got the money and the talent to do it? Mm-hmm. I'm going to be quiet, though. I'm going to be quiet. But afterwards, they're sitting there and Astrid's like, oh, we're closer than what we ever been before because we mm. told the truth. And I'm sitting there and I'm no. like, no. No, like I would feel closer to y'all would, but I still wouldn't trust y'all hoes. Exactly. No. Just because I know I don't trust just because I know that you don't trust me and you now know that I don't trust you makes absolutely no difference. That's like my family dynamics at this point. Mine too. But Coco's face after that was said. No. <laughs> no. Oh. No. But yeah, they're going through, they're talking. Um, The next day, they're working on their garments. They do a trust fall. And then Victoria goes on a killing spree. Woo! All right, let's get to the uh, main stage. Up first, we have the Boulay Brothers. What do we think of this look here? It seems like classic Boulay Brothers to me, honestly. Yeah, but I think um, Swans, I believe that's who the shorter one is, Swan Thula. Um, Mm Mm-hmm. It looks like just a size too big for her. Like it needs to be taken in just a little bit. She lost some weight. <laughs> Maybe that's what it was. She lost some weight during this process. But yeah, it just it just needs to come in just the tiniest bit. I think whoever makes their outfits makes two in a general size. And then it gets taken up by production when they get them. Hmm. Because if you look close enough, the hem lines on both of theirs... On the taller one, their hemline is invisible, but on hers, she's got a four-inch hemline. Yep, you can, and you can see where they undid the hemline right here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I didn't even catch that. Look at you. Look at you. But yeah. So we are joined this week by Joe Bob Briggs. Apparently, he's a drive-in movie host. I don't know who he is. I don't either. Maybe it was more of an 80s thing. Maybe that's why I we're still not... don't know who he is. That's maybe why we're not too familiar with it. Well, you know, you were pretty young in the 80s. I was. I was. I was. I didn't turn. I think I turned like five by the end of the 80s. Mm-hmm. So. so, yeah. Maybe for those who are familiar with Joe Bob, let us know about Joe Bob. Let us Joe know. Bob Briggs. Please. And then Harvey's back. You know, we got to see hey. Harvey there in season four. Love them there and I love them now. I I, I love like the, the partial like finger wave style going on here. And I love how he said, uh my legally I'm not here. <laughs> legally I'm not here. If my lawyer said legally, I am not here. <laughs> hmm. I'm like, yes. I thought that was cute. But let's get to the floor show. Up first is Coco Kane, who was inspired by the Boulay Brothers. 
Yes, I think she did need like some smoke and mirrors just a little bit. But other than that, I, I loved it. I forgot that she was acting out a scene for a minute. <laughs> oh no, I'm sitting there when they when it first was happening, I'm like, did I accidentally go back? I'm like, why? Because you know when they show the silhouettes. Right. Did I accidentally go back? Like, what are we doing here? And then I saw it was Coco and I'm like, oh, she's doing the intro. It still never clicked that she was actually, you know, her first hers was the Boulay brothers. Right. Because at first when I saw just like the silhouettes, I was like, oh, is she doing the little character from that Jennifer Lopez movie we're not allowed to talk about? Don't, I don't know. It's, I don't know because it's one where people are not allowed to talk about it. I think it's the one where she's like the dream person. Well, see, I'm not too familiar with a lot of J-Lo movies. I can only name like a good three or four. I don't know. It was a really bad one. Because, oh, see, my favorite J-Lo movie will always be The Breakup Plan. Oh, she The did. Backup Plan? I'm sorry, The Backup Plan. Yes, thank you. Thank you. The Backup Plan, The Wedding Planner, and... Made in Manhattan. Monster-in-Law. Oh. Made in Manhattan was okay. But anyways, that's who I thought Coco was. Uh, but the backup plan also has one of my favorite songs that's not even on freaking streaming services no it's not oh it's called uh, the key to my heart it is right after her and old boy break up mm-hmm. and they're all looking so sad and I'm like no my favorite song that they don't have a stream for is at the end of the first wives club and I don't even know what it's called I the person club in so long it's been so long it's so good I'm, I'm trying to think i i think i was a teenager the last time i saw the first wise club it was it came out in 96 i might have to put that on the queue and watch that maybe i could find it somewhere for free but anyway back to uh um, Lule brothers i think it's I on youtube she, job. she did like like i said i forgot that she was not the host for a minute I'm like, y'all need a, a new host for season five? Right? You need a third? I need, do you need a you, third? She could be some chocolate in the middle of your little backwards Oreo sandwich. Yes, yes. Um, a lot of people were uh, dragging the fact that this didn't touch the ground. And I'm like, but she's doing the Boulay Brothers. There should ne- there's always something wrong about their outfits. Always, obviously. For me, so for me, she nailed it right on the head. Exactly. Up next is Hustle Teratoma giving us the girl from the ring. Yes. I don't think the hair was long enough, but hey. Eight. 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 Baby, I saw it. I'm like, you right. Yeah. (laughs) And I love, you know, Coco and Hoso followed the prompt of making the look their own. You see the signature Hoso um face. Face. You see the tapes. To incorporate the fact that she came through televisions. I'm like, yeah. I'm through. And then, you know, there was also the whole TV on top of the head thing. It was all great for me. This was all great for me. Up next is Eva Destruction. Now, I wasn't familiar with this selection. Were you? Yes. So, so I know. explain to me, what is Eva referencing here? Martian's Attack. Martians Attack. Okay, I've never seen that. No, it's a horror comedy. And I think that's the only reason why I watched it. It was <laughs> because it was a horror comedy. Yeah. Um, But yeah, and I was like, oh, she looks like dead on. And like they said, like the only thing she changed was the fact that the character, the original character is in a gown and she happens to be in a jumpsuit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I remember the critique, they were like, it's too similar to the original. And I'm like, well, I don't know the original to, you know, be to make that reference. You know what I'm saying? The the fact that I got it like right off the jump, because I kind of had to guess for Coco's a little bit because I didn't understand it until she started doing the, the lines for them. And then I was like, oh, OK, she's the host. 
And then I got it and I was like, ooh, that was good. And I love how and, she started it too. Like, I'm like, that was so smart to put Coco first. Right. And then she was just, and that I was like, that was brilliant on the editors. <laughs> Because then it looked like she was introducing the rest of them. And then she's like, and as for the rest of these hoes. But anyway, um, yeah, I, I immediately got the Monsters Attack reference. And I was just like, oh, okay. I mean, it's cute. I'm not upset with yeah. it. Yeah. not upset with it. It could have been more. Up next is Astrid. And she's giving Alien this time, right? Predator she did alien the first time now she's doing predator yeah and from the waist up stunning yes this and then it was just missing something from the waist down and from the waist down like i understand this was probably expensive but you know i would have tried to get some over the boot area just to make right it just to incorporate it because i mean the predator was a full-bodied being yeah but so yeah, like waist up i mean like this is amazing but yeah what is this down here yeah it's a no it's a no i'm still gonna give it a two but like a mm -hmm. soft one because a soft two <laughs> and then victoria elizabeth black as the crypt keeper oh my god i screamed so loud when i saw this because i knew exactly who they were mm-hmm I haven't thought of the Crypt Keeper in so many years. So when Victoria popped up in this, and I'm like, wow, you look just, just like, the Crypt Keeper. like the Crypt Keeper. I was like, oh my God. And for whatever reason, this made my little horror heart smile. Cause I like that was the only thing I liked about horror was the Crypt Keeper because he was just hilarious to me. I even I even used to watch the cartoon. <laughs> Like, that's how much I like Tales from the Crypt. Yeah. I liked it a whole lot better than, uh, what's the other one? The, whatchamacallit, Zone? Don't give me the line, because I watch Tales from the Crypt just because of the Crypt Keeper as well. Facts. Let me, but I was intrigued by the Crypt Keeper. And yes. I was victorious take, and basically take the Crypt Keeper, but put him in drag. Exactly. I'm like, do you like my new look? <laughs> My only thing is, the drag didn't scream Victoria. Yeah, no. Other like, than the hair. Like you took the Crypt Keeper and put him in drag. I didn't see Victoria's drag on the Crypt Keeper. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because that was part of the challenge. And I got to give her props. That little acting bit, I'm like, okay, ma'am. Okay. Mm -hmm. Where, was this a few weeks ago? Where was this a few weeks ago, honey? When you needed it. But I guess it's different when you're coming up with your own script. That is true. That is true. But we have our top five monsters here. Who had your favorite look of the week? Um, I'm torn. But I'm, I think I'm going to have to give it to Coco. I'm going to give it to Hoso. So our two are next to each other. Like it's hey. most like 85% of the time our picks are next to each other. Hey. <laughs> But Hoso really just did it. And Coco just embodied it for me. I mean, nightmares I had about this girl growing up. Mm -hmm. And the whole. Nope. Mines were always about the faded beauty from 13 Ghosts. Oh, see, I've never seen 13 Ghosts. So I'm... Oh, uh, you, you're going to have to. It has the guy from Monk and Matthew Lillard when he was young, hot, and sexy. Who's going to watch it? You. <laughs> you got jokes today. Look at you. You're the winner of this week's stand up challenge. <laughs> that was funny. But yeah, I had nightmares about this little bitch growing up because mm -hmm. I, I only watched like half of the movie. I couldn't do it. Nope, 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 nope. But we find out that Hoso is the winner of this week's challenge. Do you agree? Yeah. Yeah. I agree as well. But the Boule Brothers announced, well, this week, if you're not the winner, you're up for extermination. Mm, it's and not I, elimination. It's an extermination. And not for only are you up for extermination, two of you will be going home tonight. Yes. There will not be a top four. 
Maybe they they said that they they stuck to it because I remember yes. after last season was over. They're like, we ain't doing this again. This nope. Is a rare occasion that we're gonna do a top four. Mm-hmm. That's why when we did our picks, I'm like, now nah, let's do do three because you know the Boulets don't play with that. Now Drag Race is up in the air. <laughs> right. And we're like, I guess we'll do a top five and get rid of one the night of. I'm like, yeah, that, yeah. So that's fun. But yeah, they're like, uh, uh-uh. uh. So they went backstage and, you know, Hoso kind of felt like it was her fault because, you know, the save happened on her and Elizabeth, Elizabeth, Mm -hmm. her and Eva. So she feels like she feels bad because now I'm safe and now y'all have to deal with the consequences of me staying two episodes ago. Right. But yeah, they were just pretty much discussing, you know, who should stay, uh, who's in their top threes, you know, nothing too crazy happened in this. So we get back to the main stage and we find out that they're going to be going up in pairs. Yes. The first pair was Coco and what's that baby's name? Astrid. Jesus. (laughs) So they're up here. Out of the two, who did you think was going to go down? Astrid. Same. Especially since they're in the lie detector, you know, they didn't see themselves in the top three. Mm-hmm. You you props. manifested your demise, dear. And I gotta give Astrid props for you know telling the truth because the lie detector would have caught it anyway. Mm. But I'm I'm more intrigued with her look like this. Like if you would have kept the headpiece on and gave us like a short set like mm-hmm. this, I think it could have worked. Yep, I think it could have worked. But we find out that the Boulay brothers are sending Astrid Aurelia back to the underworld. And Coco will be joining Hoso in the grand finale. I love how calm and collected Coco is up there. She knew she weren't going nowhere. It's just like, I've been giving it to you all season. I'm not going anywhere. And then we find out Victoria and Eva are next. And I think Eva saw the writing on the wall. Mm-hmm. Because I would see it too, especially after hearing them two were paired together. I'm like, me versus Eva? Eva, who has three wins and one bottom. Mm. Me, who have two wins. And I think this is Eva's second bottom. Yeah, let me go ahead. I'm going up there and get myself together. <laughs> let me take my shoes off. <laughs> so we get up there. And the boulets threw a curveball. Because mm-hmm. they said Victoria. And I'm like, what? You, baby, I, I swore I broke, I woke up my brother because he stayed the night, Monday night. Mm-hmm. I said, what? I really thought they were finishing Victoria to the house. Mm-hmm. But it was a, a fake out and it was Eva. Even I think Victoria thought it. She's like, what? What? Me? What? Me? Why? And then Eva failed. I'm like, oh, y'all are fucking shady. Hey. Y'all are so shady. Y'all done got my blood pressure rose. At five something, no, it was six something in the morning. Got my blood pressure sky high. Sky high. (laughs) Eva was sent down. I love Coco's feet. (laughs) That's random. Um, but (laughs) no, just a little tiptoe, just like uh But we find out Victoria Elizabeth Black is the final person going to the top three. Mm-hmm. And this is the top three we both picked. Hey. Didn't realize they were gonna get on my nerves all the way here. Okay, it was struggle bus. So Prisha, huh. Prisha you're nasty. Are you on Team Victoria Elizabeth Black? Team Hustle Teratoma or Team Coco Kane? I am on Team Coco Kane. Team Coco Kane. Like, honestly, like, th- that will be the only shining moment from this crappy season if we crown Coco. Yes. Yeah, Victoria technically has a better track record. And usually if you look at the previous winners, Boulay's normally go by whoever has the best track record. Mm-hmm. But I feel like this will be the one chance they have to go against that. Yes. Because I truly feel like Coco deserves the win. She's been yes. the narrator of the season. She has mm-hmm. literally been the voice of the audience. Every time we feel something, Coco is saying it. 
Yes. And I think she's more relatable, honestly. Honestly. These past few episodes have not put Victoria in the best light. No. Or and Hoso just been like on I, one all season. Yeah, I think I'll be more excited for Hoso if that whole love triangle thing didn't happen it. to bog the whole season down. Yeah. Yeah, but I, I truly one hundred, one thousand, two thousand percent think Coco Kane should be crowned as the first ever Dracula Titan. Yes. But we will find out next week. So let me stop that. Oh my goodness. I'm so ready for this show to be over. <laughs> so ready. <laughs> I wish we got more than a week off of drag. <laughs> but at least going into it is just one. And from my understanding, it's going to be just one until like February or March. And that's when they're going to... Th- from my understanding, they're going to balance out the international seasons a little bit better. Yes. For some reason, it was just only Drag Race and only All Stars on. And then mm. after that, that's when we really got into, like, we had a few internationals here and there. But, like, it was really one set. They're like, okay, here's four of them at one time. Whoa. Right. But from my understanding, because there's so many, you know, drag is all over the world. They're going to be starting early. And plus, with Global All-Stars happening, from my understanding, it's going to start, it's going to shoot and start next year. Oof. So I imagine Global All-Stars will be towards this time of the year to next year. But yeah, so at least for a while, it'll just be Drag Race US for a couple weeks. Hey. hey. But let's go ahead and wrap this up here. Lucretia, where can they find you on the social media platforms? You can find me on Cresha McGill. That's C-R-E-S-H-A-M-C-G-I-L-L on all social media. And you can find me on all social media platforms at Simply Desmond. That's S-I-M-P-L-Y-D-S-M-O-N-D. Thank you so much for spending a piece of your day with us. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And we will see y'all tomorrow. Bye.